Well, we're stuck for parts for the shower now, so I think it's best to start something else. And um, I think it's time to start looking at what we're going to do for seating. Now, I don't know, you can see behind me, I bought some secondhand seat cushions from a caravan. And um, they're quite some size and they're really comfy. So, we've got to um, work out a way of putting them in the van. Um, and I'm just thinking, because they're that sort of size, we, uh, we might be able to convert the seating into a, an occasional bed. I don't think me and Deb are going to have guests around very often, but just in case. Um, just, just thought we could call it our... Uh, occasional emergency bed to go with our occasional emergency shower. <laughs> area for the seating to be under the window between the bulkhead and the shower and one of the reasons I've picked that area is when you're uh, parked up in some coastal beauty spot overlooking the sea you can just slide the door open and watch the sunset enjoying your martini or your Newcastle brown ale works just as well are you laughing at if it's good enough for Clint Eastwood? So we're going to need some sort of base for the uh, cushion to sit on. So it's going to go along that wall there. So first thing to do, I think, is to put the insulation and vapour barrier in so that I can do a final fix of that wall panel. And I'm going to have a button screwed on from the outside in. And that will be the starting point. Also... It's going to be about 13, 14 inches high by foot and a half wide. So that's quite a bit of storage space. So I want a means to get into the storage space. Um, or it might even be two. I might have a access from the top and the side. Um, if you've seen me before, you'll know my plans are very flexible and it could all change. So um, I'll get on with that and we'll see what I come up with. Well, I don't know how well you can see from up there but what I'm doing is because it's such a, um, a large area to insulate I'm bulking it out with the rigid board insulation that I had spare that I had left over so I'll put that in to bulk it out and then I'm going to put this soft insulation over the top um, the soft insulation that I'm using is uh, this recycled plastic uh, you can buy it from B&Q, a lot of the camper van people use that and um, what I've used for the other parts of the van for the ceiling and under the floor anywhere that's like a large area that's flat I've used the Celotex boards and the polystyrene and for areas that are difficult to get into like sort of inside here you can stuff that soft stuff in and uh, when you're putting the soft stuff in, don't be tempted to squash it up really tight because uh, that's not what it's designed for. It's designed to have air in between it, to, inside it. So you to, it has to be fluffy and soft. If you squash it right up, you're defeating the point of the object. So um, that's what I'm doing now. And then I'm going to put a vapor barrier over the top. And um, that'll be it. Well, insulation and vapour barrier are on now. Um, can you see that? It's, um, I've done it along the top as well. It's a bit of a fiddly job, but it's got to be done. Um, now I've been trying to think of the name of the stuff that I put on, and I can't remember what it is. It's like this bubble wrap, and it comes in a big roll like that. And... Um, I think one big roll is enough to do with the whole van. I think that's my only one I've bought anyway. 
That's what it is, but I can't, it escapes me at the minute. I can't think what it's called, but if you're stuck and you need to na know the name, drop me a comment and I'll look through my invoices and I'll find out what it is for you. It's uh, it's like bubble wrap, as I say. And um, the reason I'm showing you it is, um, I've seen on YouTube people calling it insulation. It has got very, very slight insulation properties, but not really anything to mention. It's for vapor barrier. It's the vapor barrier, not, not insulation. Um, so don't use that as insulation because it, it's virtually no good at all. But use it as a vapor barrier. Well, the wall under the window has uh, had its final fit and can you see there's a, a button screwed on from the other side really secure and that's our starting point for the base of the seat so what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm thinking about two points of access for the seat one from above and one from the side because obviously the one from above you'll need to take the cushions off the seat and if you just want to grab something quickly you can get one out the, out the side but so I'm doing a little fascia well I, I'm not a joiner I don't know if I'm calling it the right thing I'm calling it the fascia that's the, the the bit you'll see under the cushion of the seat and it's going to have two sliding doors in so I'm just making the frame for that and the reason I'm showing you it is I'm doing it with pocket joints and um, I don't have the um, all bells and whistles kit I've just got the basic one and it's fine it does everything you sometimes have to adapt though so what I do is to keep my um, joints at a right angle or as close to a right angle as, as you can get is I clump the wood here and then I clump my square in there and then when you're um, you're gluing and screwing that the last one you just push that down push it against the square and it makes it easier so um, I'm not a joiner but a little tip well that's what I was talking about the fascia that's what goes on the front and um, I know it doesn't look very really big from there, but it is big enough to get these through like that. But I know what you're probably thinking, that's not strong enough to sit on because that's only three quarter um, timber, which you're quite right. I'm going to do another frame behind this one that won't be seen out of the same material as that that's quite sturdy material so the second frame will go behind with some lats across there this is just what I'm calling the fascia and as I say um, you might think it looks a different size to the, uh, the back but it's not it's an optical illusion well did you spot me deliberate mistake my deliberate mistake in my calculations I said earlier that the fascia was the right size because this is our storage box and it fits through now I'd overlooked the fact that the plastic channeling for the doors to run in has to go in as well and I didn't realize till I was having my dinner and I haven't got them yet so I can't try them for size but I have ordered them and if my memory serves me right from the advert the bottom one is 5 mil and the top one was 10 mil so that was 15 mil we have to have bigger than the box and I've just checked and it's okay so uh, no harm done I knew I knew I hadn't forgot Well, we've got the frame uh, made and it's uh, secured into the, the van today. I'll just give you a quick look. And it's secured 
into the um, it's secured into the uh, into the floor. There's two buttons under the floor. One there, one there. So it's absolutely solid. It won't move at all. Um, and we've got the uh, windowsill now needs to be varnished and um, well there's a couple of things need to be varnished yet obviously the frame the base for the seat doesn't have to be varnished but this bit does but the um, the runners for the doors haven't arrived yet so um, um, I don't know what else I can get on with uh, yeah, I'm nearly, I'm nearly to a point where I'm stuck now. So uh, I'll come in tomorrow and do what I can, and then hopefully the um, the guides for the doors, the runners for the doors, might be here, and then we'll get on with that. Well, the runners for the sliding doors has arrived. The plastic channeling. And can you see that, I don't know if you can tell, but one is deeper than the other. There you go. So this is the top piece and this is the bottom piece. And they do that so that you can fit the sliding door. So you put the, the small channel on the bottom, large one on the top, so you can push the door up to get it into the channel for it to come down and then there'll be a little bit of a gap inside but it won't be seen and it won't matter and your doors slide now they're not exactly as described on the advert I was expecting them to have some sort of adhesive on the back maybe some tape or something on the back and there's not and I've measured them and the 5 mil. And the 10 mil that was in the advert is the depth of the groove. It's not the overall size. So you can add about another one or maybe two mil on top of that. And I'm going to have to, well, I'm not going to have to. I'm going to try this first. I've got some double-sided tape here and I'm going to try and hold them in with that. So that's going to be another couple of mil. So our um, working space in the middle is getting eaten up but I think it'll be okay I think it'll be fine I should explain this is the first time I've ever done sliding doors so I'm no expert this is uh, just how I think it should be done um, now I'm going to fit the, the sliding doors into the frame the fascia, what I'm calling the fascia, before I fit it in, because it'd be much easier than crouching down. Now the temptation is to um, measure the inside and cut like a conventional door, but you don't want to do that because because one door is going to be there, one door is going to be there, and they're sliding. You want a bit of overlap, or you might see a gap through the middle, so you want one door to slide that way another door to slide that way and an overlap so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have i'm just going to do the overall length so you should have that size and that size as an overlap so it should be quite a bit of an overlap but it shouldn't make any difference so that's what i'm going to do i'm not going to worry about the height at this stage we can uh, cut that to size once the runners are on and double-sided tape and everything like that has been taken into consideration. So I'm going to do that now. I'm not going to film it because it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to mark that, cut it with a jigsaw and um, I'll come back to you. I just mentioned now the gap in the middle of there is 4mm because uh, it's meant for glass. It's not meant for wood. Um, and the two bits of hardboard I got, this one is a 3mm and I got another one which was a 5mm I think. 
and I thought there might have been a bit of tolerance but, but there's not. The 5mm won't fit in, this one fits in quite loosely um, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. If it rattles um, we'll have to overcome that at a later date but for now I'm going to use the 3mm ply. Okay the runners are on, um, you just cut them to size, I cleaned them with white spirits before I put them on and I cut the tape, stuck the tape onto the wood first and then put the runners on the tape. Little tip, take your time because you only get one chance at it, as soon as the runner touches the tape it's stuck. So. Uh, just take your time. Um, after I'd done that, I uh, first thing I did was to check that my storage box still goes in, which it does. And then you need to know the height of that. So I measured it and um, it was. 288 mil from the wood to the wood so I took off a couple of mil and I thought it would have been 280 would have been the right size so I had a bit of an off cut of the hardboard I was going to use cut it to 280 tried it it was too big so um, if you've got a, a piece of scrap, I would try that. So this now is 278, just two mil too big, yeah, 278 mil. And now you put it into the top one, push it up and it drops in to the bottom one and slides no problem. And also, don't just try it at one end because if there's a slight tolerance issue with your frame, it might be all right there, it might be tight there, or it might be all right there, and it might fall out there. So try it all the way along, and that's absolutely fine. It slides really easy. Um, so, that's your template for your door, for the height of your door. So I'll do that now and I'll come back to you. Well, that's the fascia finished. Uh, I think it's turned out all right. You don't need any door handles on because I've just drilled some holes to put your fingers in if you want to open them and close them. And they're sliding really smooth. Very simple idea, but I think it looks quite good. I was going to put some varnish on them, but I've run out of varnish. So I may varnish them in the future if I get some more varnish. So I'll put it in place and you can see what it's going to look like when it's fitted. As you can see, uh, the storage under the seat can fit three of our storage boxes. Those storage boxes are 17 and a half inches long, 13 and a half inches wide, and nine and a half inches deep. So that's quite some storage. And you could, if you wanted, take those three boxes out and put one larger one in if you wanted, whatever you, you like. Well, I think I'll end the video there because we're still waiting for materials and the time wise, it's, over 15 minutes already I think and I want to reveal the shower and the seat finished job together because they're sort of connected and it's a it's a sort of design that I haven't seen on YouTube before so if it works because it isn't finished yet if it works I should be showing you that in the next video and I'll finish off the shower and the seat in the same video so for now, you take care. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.